Everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, I want to talk to you guys about some frost damage that some of my fig trees took, uh, how to identify that, and also just kind of expand upon my method of chopping these trees down to the base, to 6 to 12 inches, and covering them. This is just my method of winter protection. And I want to show you guys just that in a nutshell. You know, every tree here, like this guy down here, this guy's maybe only 3 to 4 inches off the ground now. This sucker, which has got some nice age on it, I'm going to chop this entire thing back quite a bit, as you can see here. And this is like three or four year old wood that I'm just cutting out and trying to get this to branch out at a lower point to form that appropriate bush shape that you should have in the ground in a colder climate. And that's kind of what this will do. You know, it's very simple, just getting them to outward growing buds. And that's pretty much it. We just chop these down and we cover them. What I'm noticing though, with some of these trees, is that when we had our, our recent frost, we just had so much frost damage. Um, and it really is affected though on young and green growth that's not lignified, or at least not fully lignified. Um, some of this is definitely hardened up, but not to the extent that you would like. And this is just what happens. So we could have came out here and I have other examples down here. You know, here's some hardened up wood down at the bottom, which is nice, but then it started putting out late in the season, this new growth and this new growth just got blasted by that cold. It didn't matter really what we did because this growth really shouldn't never have happened, right? This is a, a preventative thing that we should have taken with our trees. And it's not always possible. We need to get really good at growing fig trees. But controlling that vigor late in the season, you know, stopping the water, stopping the feeding, all of that, even with the potted trees, this is pretty much the same story, except that we have in the ground, we have so much clay and water and nutrients. Our soil is so heavy that it's very difficult to accomplish that with our in-ground trees. But for most of them, we did a really nice job in certain genetics, you know, like this tree down here, my Campanieri, even though we chopped it all the way down to the base here, uh, this one had a really nice um, level of lignification. And certain varieties just do this. You know, here's a more mature tree. This is my LSU Champagne. And you can see on the top of these branches, I mean, there's maybe a little bit of frost damage up here, very minimal, if any. Um, and you can kind of tell what some of that looks like. Like, look at this branch right here. If I can get the camera to focus on this, it's a bit difficult. See that little tip here and how this has taken some damage? That's the new tender growth. You know, that's the growth that really got hit hard by all this. And that's what we're trying to prevent from ever happening. It's not necessarily that frost damage. The frost damage isn't going to hurt the entire tree. It's really only very exclusive to about this portion of the tree. I mean, that's really all it is. So we lost some of that growth. On other trees, it was a bit more, as I showed you guys down here, with some of these cuttings I've just been collecting. You can kind of tell because the green's wood, or the wood is, uh, the wood is green, right? So it's just not gonna survive that cold. And some people might make the argument, well, I could have came out here and taken all these cuttings before we got down to 20 degrees Fahrenheit, before we got down to 22 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, you know what, that, those cuttings, this green stuff here, isn't gonna do well anyway. This isn't gonna root well, this isn't gonna sell well, this isn't something anybody wants. So the only way that we can kind of prevent this from happening is just doing that, is preventing it from happening in itself by stopping these trees from growing too much getting the right amount of vigor the right amount of techniques so that that doesn't really happen and again it's just it's tougher with certain varieties like ronde bordeaux here has got some of that wood younger trees in general seem to get more of that wood and they they tend to grow at weird stages trees that we plant in the ground later in the season versus in the spring tend to do this more you know, but all my potted trees, which I really controlled the water, this is my Black Madeira UC Davis, everything on here is completely hardened, perfectly lignified. We stopped the growth, especially on this tree, because it put on so much fruit, 
that it just stops growing. I mean, that's part of the other, that's part of the equation there. And as you can see, it's just like, there's nothing that's gonna bother this. This thing will take down to 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Where the tree that we saw over there, or the couple of trees that we had planted, they're not gonna be able to handle that. At least in that portion of the wood, right? So the wood has a certain hardiness temperature rating, and then the roots have a certain temperature hardiness rating. So the roots will take down to about 14, 15 degrees. If you're lucky, maybe you can go down to 12. Sometimes, you know, certain trees may have hardier roots than others. It's really difficult to say. But on the wood, you know, we're looking at maybe even 10 degrees Fahrenheit for a lot of these varieties. We're looking at even five degrees Fahrenheit for a lot of these varieties. You know, that's how people are able to grow these trees in very cold places. Even some trees can handle down to zero or even negative four in the case of Campanieri. Hardy Chicago is pretty good around the zero degree mark. And I think a lot of these very hardy varieties, the you know very few genetics that exist within the thousands of varieties of figs, you know, you're looking at maybe zero to five degrees Fahrenheit. I think five degrees is really the cutoff for a lot of them. If you get into 10, you're really, really good. You're looking great. Um, and if you're in 15, almost nothing will die at 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, very few varieties, you, you know, maybe even Smith wouldn't die. I mean, my Smith didn't die. My Moscatel Preto. Um, I have a couple just really not very hardy varieties that it's on the other side of that spectrum, right? You know, you've got things like Hardy Chicago, which are extremely hardy. And those are like one out of every thousand. But you've also have some that are one of every thousand or whatever it is, you know, one of every 500, whatever it is that are also not very hardy and they're on the other side of that spectrum so um you know it probably starts somewhere around zero degrees on the hardiest and then you got on the least hardiest somewhere around 15 degrees but for the most part as i was saying if you just get this process right where we can harden up all this wood correctly stop all that growth and this is why i talk so much about lignification around august and july is because that's really what you should be thinking about um, at that time of the year. It's, it's kind of difficult because you have to kind of see into the future and a lot of you guys might be new at this, but that's the reality. So again, we're just coming in here today. We're chopping all these guys down. It's taken me quite some time. Um, and then we are gonna put some, um, some vole protection down. We're gonna cover them and we're gonna put the straw here on top of that tarp and we're good to go. So thank you guys here for watching this one. We'll talk to you all soon. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and figboss.com. That's our blog. Um, please subscribe to the newsletter down there, and we'll see you soon. All right, take care, guys.